Arkansas and Missouri. Or as many say, Missouri. And wait a second, why is Arkansas pronounced like that? Well, that's another video, buddy. Check it out. Anyway, Missouri and Arkansas, the show me states and the natural state. Two bordering states where the South kind of meets the West and Midwest and these United States. And I know I have talked some trash about Missouri throughout my life being a Kansas boy, but I gotta admit, it's one of my favorite places to visit. And I only don't visit Arkansas as much since it's a bit further of a drive for me. There's a relatively new rivalry, apparently, between the sports teams of the two major universities in each state. The football rivalry is known as the Battle Line Rivalry. But let's first look at what these two wonderful states have in common. First, both are named after major rivers that go through each state. Both states have a low cost of living, although it's generally cheaper to live in Arkansas than Missouri. Residents of both tend to be more religious than most other Americans. The biggest religion in both is Christianity, of course, specifically Evangelical Protestant. Both are in the Bible Belt, a region of the country where Protestant fundamentalism is widely practiced. Residents of both generally lean to the right politically, although Arkansas residents are generally even more conservative than Missouri residents. The median age is about the same in both. Both have mountains, although they're small ones. Most of the Ozarks, a region of Hold up now. Get that footage off. They didn't really film it there. There we go. Anyway, most of the Ozarks, a region of forested small mountain ranges and plateaus that make up an area of almost 47,000 square miles, are in both states. While the Ozarks bring lots of tourism to both states for outdoorsy folks, obviously, Missouri also has little gems like Branson, which would draw tourists even if it wasn't in the Ozarks. It is known for its shows and attractions, and while it's home to less than 12,000 people, it gets more than 9 million visitors each each year. By the way, it's only about a 15 minute drive from the Arkansas border. Both have a lot of agriculture going on. Here is where most of that happens in both states as this land is generally more flat. The biggest crop in Missouri is soybeans and the biggest crop in Arkansas is rice. Arkansas produces around half of the entire country's rice. Woeness. Both have a humid subtropical climate. Although northern Missouri is classified as having a humid continental climate. Both also have similar natural disasters and occasionally have to deal with flooding, thunderstorms, and tornadoes. Arkansas has more storms that are actually remnants from tropical storms since it is closer to where hurricanes make landfall. Both have to worry about earthquakes, but in particular, northeastern Arkansas and southeastern Missouri have to worry a bit, uh, more. That's where the 1811 to 1812 New Madrid earthquakes took place, named after the town where its epicenter was, New Madrid, Missouri. They were the worst earthquakes, east of the Rocky Mountains anyway, in American history so bad they caused church bells to ring in Boston and literally changed the course of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River? I say? Why yes I say. The mighty Mississippi River marks the eastern border of both states. The Red River, also marks a little bit of the Arkansas border, while the Missouri River marks some of Missouri's border. But what about this little tail thingy in the southeastern corner of Missouri? Now that's interesting, isn't it? Well, apparently folks actually refer to that area as the Missouri Boot Heel. Now, originally all of Missouri's southern border with Arkansas was supposed to be located at 3630, you know, simply an extension west of the Virginia, North Carolina, and Kentucky, Tennessee border. Well, nope, it's not. And it's all because of one powerful dude, John Hardiman Walker. He owned a great chunk of land in the area and wanted his land to be part of Missouri, not Arkansas, since Missouri supposedly had more natural resources, in particular access to the two longest rivers in the country, the Missouri River and Mississippi River. Due to his connections, he was able to convince Congress to create the boot heel so his land could be in Missouri. Both states spend a similar amount each year per student on education. 
education. The biggest three industries in both states are healthcare, retail, and manufacturing. Both have rich music histories, with Missouri being the birthplace of ragtime, Kansas City jazz, and St. Louis blues. And Arkansas, known for its deep blues, gospel, country, and bluegrass roots. Both have one national park. And in case you're wondering, yes, the Gateway Arch National Park is actually a national park. And at just over 90 acres, it's the smallest one in the country. That said, that magnificent arch is the country's tallest monument. So what about their differences? Well, now, before I get into it, it's sponsorship time, baby. Do you spend money? Do you earn money? Are you looking for a place to simplify your finances? then perhaps Truebill is for you. It's an all-in-one personal finance app, and this video is sponsored in part by Truebill. It empowers you to take back control over your financial life, helping you save more, spend less, and enjoy the feeling of financial freedom. You just securely connect your financial accounts and they'll do the rest. It lets you find all your subscriptions in one place, cancels any unwanted ones for you, negotiates bills on your behalf, monitors your credit score, and automates your savings all in one place. I've been using it to budget like a boss. Did I just say that? I'm afraid I did. What is happening to me? But seriously, my favorite feature is the visual spend to earn ratio. I also like how it literally cancels subscriptions for you. Heck yeah. All I do is go into the app, select the subscription I no longer use, and then click cancel this for me. Truebill takes care of all the rest. Download Truebill for free by going to truebill.com slash MrBeats or just check out the link in the description. Okay, so I was saying about differences. Uh, why, yes, I was. First of all, Missouri is bigger, but probably not as much bigger as you would think. Just about 1.3 times the size of Arkansas. Missouri borders eight different states. The only other state that borders that many is Tennessee. Arkansas borders six. The population of Missouri is more than twice that of Arkansas. A big reason why are Missouri's two major metropolitan areas, Kansas City and St. Louis, both wonderful cities that I am very, very familiar with. Both metros have more than two million people. Two out of three Missourians live in either Kansas City or St. Louis. Arkansas's biggest metropolitan area Little Rock doesn't even crack 750,000 people. I will say, though, that its second biggest metro, commonly referred to as simply Northwest Arkansas, is currently one of the fastest growing metros in the country, and personally, one of my favorite parts of the country, I might add. Much of its growth has been driven by three huge companies located there, Walmart, Tyson Foods, and J.B. Hunt Transport Services. While Walmart started in Arkansas. I ought to say that the first Walmart Supercenter to ever open, opened in Missouri. Anyway, due to that bigger population, Missouri has more electoral votes. Missouri became a state almost 15 years earlier. Oh yeah, let's get into some history, shall we? Humans have lived in the area for thousands of years. At the time of European arrival, the dominant tribes in modern-day Arkansas were the Caddo, Osage, and Quapaw, and the dominant tribes in modern day Missouri were also the Osage and Quapaw, but additionally the Illini, Chickasaw, and of course the Oto Missouri tribe. Hundreds of years before European arrival, both modern day Arkansas and Missouri were dominated by the Mississippian culture, famously known for the mounds they built. Many of these mounds still exist. The French were the first Europeans to stumble upon modern day Missouri, while the Spanish were the first to stumble upon modern day Arkansas. In 1541, an expedition led by Hernando de Soto came through present-day central Arkansas, but honestly, he wasn't that impressed by it, so they left. It wasn't until 132 years later that the French Jesuit priest Jacques Marquette, along with French trader Louis Joliet, first came to present-day Missouri. They also came to present-day Arkansas, which was settled by Europeans first. Missionaries and traders led the way. Henry de Tonti was the first 
European dude to establish a settlement there in 1686 called the Arkansas Post. It became a thriving trading post where both the French and Spanish regularly did business with the Quapaw. It wasn't until 1735 that the French first settled in present-day Missouri, establishing St. Genevieve. Oof, my French is so bad. For the next 27 years, more and more French settlers moved to the region, which by this time was part of an area the French called Louisiana. But then there was the French and Indian War, a major war between Britain and France, and after France lost it, future Arkansas and Missouri were now secretly under Spanish control. However, the Spanish weren't that interested in settling the area, but more and more French were. Flash forward to 1803, and now France has control of Louisiana in a territory once again under Napoleon, but he wants to sell it. So who does he sell it to? Uh, I think you know. Yep, the United States. After this, many Americans begin to move west to live in the area, promptly pushing the American Indians who already lived there off their land and further west. After Louisiana became a state, future Arkansas became part of Missouri territory, which, wow, look at how big Missouri is, whoa, with St. Louis as the capital. But seven years later, the United States Congress created Arkansas Territory, which, yeah, I see you, Arkansas Territory. Not bad. Going all the way to modern-day New Mexico, Missouri wanting to become a state that same year caused a bit of an uproar, I'd say. You see, it wanted to be a slave state where slavery was legal, but this meant that there would be more slave states than free states in the country. Congress settled the matter with the Missouri Compromise, which, among other things, created Maine as a free state and let Missouri be a slave state. Missouri's constitution not only protected slavery, but also banned free blacks from entering the state. Jeez, Missouri. Freaking jeez. Meanwhile, slavery was a bit more controversial of an issue in Arkansas territory. Many in Arkansas actually didn't want slavery. Regardless, on June 15th, 1836, Arkansas was admitted to the Union as a slave state. And by that time, its economy greatly depended on slave labor. Meanwhile, new settlers were heading to both in huge numbers. Between 1830 and 1840, Missouri's population more than doubled, and Arkansas's population more than tripled. However, while Arkansas remained a mostly agricultural state, Missouri became a much more industrial state. And while slave labor was big in Missouri, the Underground Railroad, the sea secret network of roots and safe houses used to aid runaway slaves was also big there. Hmm. By the 1840s, Missouri had become the, quote, gateway to the West. You could say it all started after Lewis and Clark left Missouri on their epic journey 40 years prior, but Missouri also became the starting point for the Santa Fe Trail, the Oregon Trail, and the Pony Express. When hundreds of thousands of Americans traveled westward over the next couple decades, often Missouri was their starting point. During an era during the 1850s known as Bleeding Kansas, Missouri got caught up in some violence after Missourians crossed the western border to attempt to make Kansas a slave state. I have an entire video about that if you want to watch it later and stuff, eh? Anyway, Bleeding Kansas ended up being a preview of the American Civil War. During it, Arkansas had broken away from the United States, joining the newly formed Confederate States of America. Missouri stayed with the Union, but remained a slave state throughout the war. Slave states that did leave the Union were called border states, by the way. After Kansas was admitted to the Union as a free state, violence continued to happen along the Kansas-Missouri border throughout most of the war. Still, the war was arguably more devastating to Arkansans than Missourians. Arkansas struggled to grow its economy during the Reconstruction Era. And who became scapegoats? African Americans, of course. The Jim Crow laws, which treated African Americans as second-class citizens, were pretty horrible in both states, actually for the entire rest of the 1800s and first half of the 1900s. Thousands of racially motivated lynchings also took place in both states. In the 1950s, Arkansas became infamous for resisting school desegregation and the federal government had to step in to protect African American students in Little Rock, these students known later as the Little Rock Nine. From the end of the Civil War until the end of the 1800s, Missouri, believe it or not, was the 
fifth most populous state in the country. It also became one of the wealthiest states in the country. Meanwhile, Arkansas consistently tried to play catch up, usually lagging behind with industry. However, it did develop a thriving tourism economy, especially with places like Eureka Springs and Hot Springs. In the 20th century, both states became much more urban with much more diverse economies. That all said, today Arkansas remains one of the most rural states in the country. Did you know that? Well, I don't know if you knew that or not because I can't hear you. Anyway, according to Forbes magazine, today Missouri is a much better state for business. Probably a big reason why is that Missouri residents generally pay less taxes than Arkansas residents. The poverty rate is also higher in Arkansas. As you might assume, the median household income is higher in Missouri. Arkansas has some of the worst poverty in the entire country. More Missouri residents have college degrees. The violent crime rate is higher in Arkansas. Dang, Arkansas. I'm sorry for all the negative stuff all in a row like that. Um, how about this? Arkansas can brag that it has slightly bigger mountains, eh? The highest point in Arkansas is about 300 meters higher than Missouri's highest point. Arkansas gets more precipitation overall and is a bit more humid. Being further north, Missouri gets colder in the winter and Arkansas gets slightly hotter in the summer. The differences aren't that big though. And there's probably bigger differences in temperatures between the higher elevations of the Ozarks and lower elevations of both states. Arkansas has a more ethnically diverse population overall. More famous people seem to have come from Missouri. Sure, Arkansas can claim Bill Clinton, Johnny Cash, and Billy Bob Thornton, but Missouri can claim Harry Truman, Mark Twain, Walt Disney, Chuck Berry, Brad Pitt, Sheryl Crow, and many more for real. Missouri is home to the longest rail trail, the Katy Trail, which I've been on multiple times, and it's awesome. Arkansas is the only state with an active diamond mine. In fact, at Arkansas's Crater of Diamonds State Park, any diamonds you find there are yours to keep. In conclusion, Missouri is a Midwestern state, but much of Southern Missouri kind of makes it seem like a Southern state. Arkansas is definitely a Southern state, but parts of it, like Northwest Arkansas in particular, somehow feel Midwestern? So if you like both the South and Midwest, these two states are for you. A shout out to Emperor Tiger Star who is from Missouri for reading over my script. So which state is better, Missouri or Arkansas? Also, what did I forget to mention? As always, I especially want to hear from folks who are actually from one of these two states. And I've only got three states left to compare, Oklahoma, Iowa, and Michigan. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do repeats for this series now. So with that in mind, in 2022, which states would you like me to compare Oklahoma, Iowa, and Michigan to? Another strong possibility for Michigan, by the way, is for me to just compare the Upper Peninsula to the Lower Peninsula. Let me know what you think. Hey, if you are watching this right now and you can hear me, you are the person I admire the most. That was a bit cheesy.